people are here for a very divisive issue, and I'm here for a united issue. I'm here because our religious freedom is being infringed upon, um, and I'm gonna give you three different issues how our religious freedom is being lost. The first thing that happened in New York City is a nurse, a religious nurse, that it's against her religion to accommodate sinful activities and participate in an abortion, was forced to partake in an abortion. Religious people shouldn't be forced to do something that's against their religion. The second thing that happened in New Jersey, there was a church, two women wanted to get married on church property. If that's a simcha hall, it applies to Jewish people also. If the mosques do something like that, it applies to them also. And the church lost in court. The judge said that the church must comply and provide a civil union to the lesbian couple. The third issue is in New York State. We have something called the Blaine Amendment. Okay, this Blaine Amendment is as discriminatory as the Jim Crow laws of the South. It discriminates against religious people. All of you, Muslim, Jewish, Christian, doesn't make a difference. And I'm gonna read it word for word out of the New York State Constitution. It says, neither the state nor any subdivision thereof shall use its property or credit or any public money or authorize or permit either to be used directly or indirectly in aid or maintenance. I'm gonna skip a few words. It's an exception of any school or institution of learning wholly or in part under the control of direction of any religious denomination. You wanna know why private schools don't have any money from the state? This is it right here. And there's nobody in the public office that's doing a thing about it. My name's Joseph Hayon. Some of you received my cards and I would like to thank um, the community board for giving me a chance to speak. That is the end of the public session. There were no other registered speakers. Everyone that came through the door, these two girls here were telling if you want to speak, fill out speakers for it. Excuse me, we do not scream out. Would you like to speak? You have three minutes. Let's go. Let's go, make it quick. The opportunity to speak, which I certainly did not want. Uh, I, I think it was what troubled me most about this was um, portraying people who don't think this mosque is a good idea as racist. I'm not a racist. As a matter of fact, I'm. A, ask me what race I'm from, and I probably have it in my blood. I'm a Swede Rican. Swedish Korean, and I have American Indian too. But in any case, I think that what we really need to say, and I don't know if it's just me, but I think that there's a matter of fear because of the history of mosques, of madrasas, of the Muslim Brotherhood, which is sponsoring the building of this mosque. And the Muslim Brotherhood does not have a good track record nor do the people who are associated with Mr. Mahdi Bray, who's associated with, thank you, with the people who are building and supporting this mosque. This is a man who supports Hamas, who supports Hezbollah, who supports terrorist organizations. He supports and defends people who are terrorists. And I think that this is a matter of fear for all of us who live in the community. And I don't hold anything against anyone here. But I think that 
uh, this organization does not have a good track record, and we have a good reason for our concern. And I don't think it has anything to do with racism. I think it's simply rational fear. We must be honest. We are again at the end of the public session.